What's going on guys? So this is going to be probably the longest video that I've ever done. We're going to jam pack this application build into one video. It's about two and a half hours long. I've already recorded it. I'm friggin' beat. Um, but we're going to create this Storybooks app, which is a, it's a CRUD application, but we're also adding Google OAuth to it using Passport, uh, using sessions and cookies. We're going to use MongoDB. We're going to store our users our stories and also um, our sessions. We're going to save our sessions in the database. So there's a lot of little things we'll be doing throughout this application that should help you in your Node.js development. Um, we're also using handlebars as our template engine. I didn't want to go off onto like a front end framework or anything. I wanted to keep it all server side. So I'm just going to go through and show it to you. And if you took my older dev to deployment course, my Node.js course on Udemy, which I retired about a year ago. This is probably going to look familiar. This is from that, although I did completely redo it and update it. So basically we can this is the landing page and we can't do anything without logging in. If I try to go to, you know, slash stories or anything, it's just going to bounce me back here. So I need to log in. And if you have multiple Google accounts, you can choose one. I'm going to choose my wife's dummy account here. So once we log in, it takes us to the dashboard and basically it'll save your Google data in the database, just like your name and um, your image, your Google image and stuff like that. And then here will be a list of your stories and you can create a story right here. If I click add story and it just has a title, I'll just say some story. We can make it either public or private. If you don't want others to see it on the public page, you can set it to private. And I'll just say this is my story and save. And, and also we're using a, a WYSIWYG editor here. This is a CK editor. Um, so we can save that. You can see that shows up here. And if I go to public stories, you can see that it shows right here. Now, whichever stories are mine, you can see actually three out of the four of the, the account that I'm logged in with, then there's an edit icon. All right, I can't edit this one because this is my other Google account. So if I click edit, I can, you know, I can change it to private, save, and now if I go back to my public stories, it's not here because it's private. And if I want, I can click read more on one of these. And if I want to read all of the stories or see all the public stories from a user, I can click here and it'll show me just that user. I can also click on this and it'll show me just that user. Okay, so if I want to see all Jen's stories, I can click here. All right. So, I mean, it doesn't, it, there's not a ton of functionality, but there's actually quite a bit that goes into this in terms of, you know, authentication and stuff like that, protecting routes and, um, creating all the story routes and stuff like that. We can log out and I mean, that's pretty much it. So it'll take, you know, the video, the recording was about two and a half hours long. I do, I will warn you, I start to get tired at the end um, because I did this all, you know, straight through, but I think there's a lot of information in here that, um, that can help you out. But um, uh, again, it's not a, it's not a polished tutorial like some of my, my other ones. So hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get started on our Storybooks application. And I think the first thing that I wanna do is just set up our database and get that out of the way. So we're using MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database, and you can certainly download it and install it on your local machine if you want. However, I'm gonna be using MongoDB Atlas, which is a cloud version of the database. So the data isn't actually stored on our machine, it's stored on, in Atlas on a, a cloud server. So you want to go to mongodb.com. If you don't have an account, you can just click on try free, sign up, do all that stuff, register your email, and then go ahead and sign in. So I'm just going to sign into one of my kind of dummy accounts. Now, once you sign in, you'll probably see a different screen than mine because I already have a cluster set up. What you want to do is just create a new cluster and it, you'll basically you'll see a screen like this and you can choose AWS for your provider. You can leave all the defaults. If you want to rename the cluster here, you can and then just click create and it might take three or four minutes to get set up and then you should see a screen like this. Now, the next thing you want to do is create a database user. So you want to go to database access and right here, add new user. So for uh, username, what is this password? 
So this is the username. So Brad T one two three four. I'll use the same for the password. Okay, and then read and write to any database. We're going to keep that, and then just click Add User. And then the next thing we want to do is network access. So you can actually um, add your IP address here so that only your machine can connect to this database directly. Now I'm just going to say allow access from anywhere because this isn't a production app or anything like that. I also don't want to show my IP address, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that and confirm. And then if we go back to clusters, as long as it's all set up, you should have access to these buttons. If we go to collections, you'll be able to see your data here, although we don't have any at the moment. If we go back and we click connect and you click connect to your application, you'll get this connection string, which is what we're going to use uh, later on when we're ready to connect our application. So right now I'm just going to leave this tab open and we're going to jump into VS Code. Now from here, what I'm going to do first, of course, is npm init, which will generate a package.json file. Of course, you need Node.js installed. If you don't have it, just go to nodejs.org and download and install it. So description will say app to create public and private stories. And the entry point, I'm going to make app.js. Usually how I do it is if I'm if I'm building like a, you know, an app with a front end using React or Vue or something, I'll call this server.js. But if it's a complete back end server side rendered um, application, I'll use app.js. It's just preference. So let's see, author, you can put your own name here if you'd like, and then MIT for the license. Okay, so we have a package.json. Now, there's quite a few dependencies that we're going to be using, quite a few packages. So I figure we can just install them now, and that'll give you a, a good idea of what we'll be doing, what we'll be working with. So let's install our dependencies. So first thing we want, of course, is Express, which is our web framework to create routes and stuff like that. We also need Mongoose to uh, work with our database, create models and so on. We're going to use something called Connect Mongo which is going to allow us to store our sessions in our database so that when we reset the server, uh, we don't get logged out. OK, and then we want express dash session for sessions and cookies. We want express dash handlebars, which is what we're using as a template engine. If you want to use pug or EJS or something like that, you can or if, even if you wanted to just output JSON and use React or Vue or something. You can do that as well, but we're going with handlebars for this. Uh, let's see, we want .env for our config. So d.env, so we can put our environment variables in there. Uh, we're going to use something called meth method override. So this will allow us to make, for instance, put and delete requests from our templates because by default, you can only make get and post, right? You can't do put and, and delete by default, but this method override allows us to. So we'll also need moment, which is used to format dates. We're going to use Morgan for logging. Um, we're going to use passport for authentication. And since we're using Google for our login, we need the passport dash Google dash OAuth 2.0 package, OK, because we're using OAuth 2.0. And I think that's it. So we'll go ahead and run this and all those should get installed. Now I do have just a couple dev dependencies. So we're going to npm install dash uppercase D nodemon. So nodemon will just con continuously watch our server so we don't have to restart it every time we make a change and then cross env. I'm going to use this because I want to put inside our scripts, our start script and dev script. I want to have a, um, a global and a global variable or an environment variable for our node environment. And it's different depending on if you're on Windows or Mac or Linux or whatever. So we're going to just use that. So there's no, you know, confusion now. Yeah, everything is installed. So for scripts, let's create our start script. So this is basically what we what we'll be using in production. Uh, I may deploy this. I may deploy it to something like Heroku. I'm not sure yet. Um, but here we want to run, first of all, cross env so that we can set uh, an environment variable here because I want to explicitly set the node environment here to production. Okay, so you want to set that to production and then we'll just run node and then the file, which is going to be called app.js. 
And then what we'll do here is this will be the dev. So this is what we'll be running most of the time. And we want this to be the development environment. And we want to run node mon instead of just node. All right. So we'll save that. We can close this file up and we can create our app JS, which is basically our entry point. So let's start off with just creating a just a basic express server. So we want to require express. And let's also bring in dot env, which will have our config. Our variables. So dot env. And then to load the um, the config file, we have to let's put a comment here and say load config and we need to call dot env dot config and then we just pass in here an object with the path to the config file which we haven't created yet but it's going to be in config slash config dot env that's going to be our where we put all of our global variables all right and then we'll initialize our app whoops so const app will initialize that with express And then we want to call app dot listen. Now for the port, I actually want to put the port in this config file. So let's create a folder called config and let's create a file called config dot env. And here we'll put our port and I'm going to run it on 3000. Now we also want to put our Mongo URI here. We might as well do that now. So our Mongo URI, if we go back to our database and we click connect connect to your application we can copy this and we can put that in there we just have to make sure we replace password and then by default oh it used to be test so now they just do this this db name i'm going to call it storybooks and it'll create it automatically so let's save that so now we at least we have our uh, database string in there But let's close that up now for the port. Let's create a variable here and we want to set this to process dot env dot port. So whenever we use process dot env, we can use variables that are in that config. Now, if that's not there, I want to run it on 3000. Let's put 5000 just so we can make sure it's coming from here. All right. And then we can just put that port in here and then let's just console log. So for console log, I'm going to just uh, I'm going to put in some back ticks and I want to show the environment and the port. So let's just say server running on we'll say server running in and then we can grab the process dot env dot node env. So it will be running in either either development or de, um, uh, production mode on port. And then we'll put that port variable. All right. So let's save that and we should be able to run this. So let's say NPM run dev and we get server running in development mode on port 3000. So we know it's coming from here. I'm just going to change this to 3000 and then I want to stop it and run NPM start and make sure that it runs in production mode. Okay, so it's running production mode port 3000, but we want to run it in development mode. I just wanted to test that out. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, I think the next thing that I would like to do is just connect to our database just to just to get that whole rigmarole over with. So what I'm going to do is in config, let's create a file called db.js. And if you took my Node.js um, API course on Udemy or a lot of my Node.js videos, I basically do this the same way all the time. So we're going to bring in Mongoose. Require mongoose, and then I have a function here called connect db, and we're going to call this async because when you work with um, when you work with MongoDB, I'm sorry, mongoose, you're working with promises. Okay, so like mongoose dot connect returns a promise, and I don't want to use dot then. I don't like that syntax. I want to use a sync await. If you want to use dot then, that's fine. But I prefer a sync await. So here I'm just going to put a try catch. And we want to try to connect. So let's create a connection variable here and we want to await 
mongoose.connect because this returns a promise. And we want to pass in the connection string, which we have in process.env.mongo underscore URI. Okay, now there's some options as a second argument here. There's some options that we want to put in to avoid any warnings in the console. One of them is uh, new use new URL parser. We want to set that to true. We want to set use unified topology to true and we want to set use find and modify to false. So this is going to stop some warnings in the console. So after we connect, I just want to console log and we'll put oops. We'll put some back ticks in here and I'm just going to say Mongo DB connected and I'm going to put the host. So if we use that con variable and then dot connection and then host. So that should log that. Now, if something goes wrong and we can't connect, let's console error, whatever the error is, and let's just stop everything, stop the process. So process exit and we want to exit with failure. So we want to put a one in here. And then finally, we just outside of here, we just module exports connect DB so that we can use this. We can run this in the app JS file. OK, so pretty simple, simple connection. Um, let's go to app JS now. And let's bring that connect DB function in. So we'll say const connect DB. And we're going to take that from the config slash uh, DB file. Right? Config DB. Uh, DB. Yeah, so we need to call this. I'm going to go right here and let's. We don't need a comment. Actually, we'll just say connect DB. It's pretty self-explanatory. So now I'm going to run and save this. And down here in the console, you'll see MongoDB connected and it shows my my host cluster and all that. OK, so now that we have that out of the way, let's see what we want to do next. Um, let's set up Morgan for logging, which is pretty simple. So we're just going to bring in Morgan. I just want it so that when there's a request to a page or any kind of request at all that it just shows down in the console. So I'm going to go right under where we initialized our app and I only want to run this in uh, development mode. So we'll just check process dot env dot node env if that's equal to development, then we're just going to app dot. We're just going to add the Morgan middleware which is just app dot use Morgan and there's different arguments you can pass in for different levels of logging. I'm going to use dev. OK, so that just makes it so it shows the HTTP method, the response or whatever. It just shows that stuff in the console. So the next thing I want to do is set up our template engine. So I'm going to be using handlebars and first thing we'll do is bring it in and then there's just some middleware that we have to add. So let's go up here and let's say const exp HBS so express handlebars and let's require express dash handlebars and then the middleware I forget exactly what it is so let's search for uh, express handlebars All right, so let's see. There's actually we can make it so that we don't have to use the dot handlebars extension like this. I want to use dot HBS and I know there's a snippet here somewhere to do that. And you don't have to search for this. You can just copy what I put or you can just get it from the, the repo. So I think yeah, I think this is it right here. So we need this. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And let's put that right here. So we're setting our view engine and we should be able to use the HBS extension. And then I think we have to put the default layout um, because how, how this works, if you've never dealt with a template engine, we have a layout that wraps around everything. That layout has like the HTML head and body tags and stuff that you don't want to repeat in different views and then it basically just wraps around those views. Um, so I 
think it's default layout. Let me just check. Yeah, def so default layout, which I'm going to call main.hbs. So let's put that in here. Let's see. Default layout is going to be main. All right, so that adds the middleware for it. So now let's create a views folder. I know we have no routes yet. We'll do that in a second, but I just want to create a views folder and let's create our main layout. So to do to create layouts, you want to create a folder within views called layouts. And then inside layouts, we're going to create main dot HBS. We're going to actually have two layouts. One is going to be for the login page because it's going to be set up different. It's not going to have a nav bar. It's going to have, be very narrow. So we do want two layouts. So let's create that as well. So we want login dot HBS. So we just have two layouts now in main HBS. I'm going to go ahead and just put a boilerplate here. Just basic, you know, boilerplate HTML and we'll say storybooks. Now we are using um, actually, you know, we'll wait on materialize and all that stuff until we actually get this set up. Now, wherever you want to output the view, which obviously is in the body, you want to put triple curly braces and then body. So whatever view we're we're practice, we're looking at, um, it's going to display here. So let's now create a route that so that we can render some views. So I'm going to create a new folder called routes and we're going to start off here with our index.js. This is basically any route that isn't followed by something like, for instance, we're going to have auth slash whatever that will be the auth route um, stories. So when we have story slash something, that'll be the stories route. But if we want something that's top level like dashboard or just the home page, we want that to be in this index.js. Okay. So let's start off by bringing in Express because we're going to be using the Express router. Okay, so to create our router, we're going to create a variable and we're going to set that to Express dot uppercase R router. And then before I forget, let's just make sure we export this router. And then we can set up our routes and I usually like to put some kind of description of what this is. So this is going to be the login, let's say login slash landing page. And then the actual route, it's going to be a get request to slash. Now, the way we create a route, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, but we're going to say router dot get to, to handle a get request to slash. And then we want our function here with the request and response. And for now, let's just res dot send. So we'll just send some text to the client and we'll just say um, login. And then I'll do the same for dashboard. That's also going to go in here. So this is going to be the dashboard. Uh, whoops. And it's going to be a get request to slash dashboard. And of course, we need to change this. All right. Now, in order to use this file, we need to go to app.js and we need to basically link our, our routing files. So here, let's say routes and let's do um, app.use. So anything that's just slash is going to link to that file we just created, which is dot slash routes slash index. OK, so now if I open up a browser and I go to HTTP localhost port 3000, I see login. If I go to slash dashboard, I spelled it wrong. Oops. Uh, dashboard, we see dashboard. Now it's not rendering any any um, views or templates or anything. It's just sending the text. So what we want to do now is create inside views, not in the layouts, but just in the views folder. I'm going to create a file called let's create dashboard dot uh, HBS. And let's also create inside views 
a full, uh, not a folder, a file called login.hbs. So in login, let's just put H1s for now, just so we can make sure that these render. So dashboard, another H1. Okay, so we'll save that. Now in order to render these, it's simple. We just need to go back to our routing, our index route. And instead of send, we want to change both of these to render. And let's just make this lowercase, this too. And it's going to look for templates or views called login and dashboards. Now if I go back and reload, now we see the H1. If I go to dashboard, we see the H1. And it's wrapped in that main layout. You can see the title here. So let's start to add some of the stuff to the layout like uh, materialize. So I'm going to go to the main HBS layout and let's search for let's see, we want materialize. <clears throat> so if we go to get started, I'm going to grab the CDN here and put this here. And then we also want the JavaScript, the materialized JavaScript. What's really cool about this framework is you don't need jQuery like a lot of others. Um, so that we're going to put right here, right above the ending body tag. I'm also going to be using font awesome. So I'm going to go to cdnjs.com and search for font awesome and grab the this right. Uh, I'm actually going to use the CSS. So all dot min dot CSS. I'm going to copy that link tag and put that right below materialize. So if I save this and I go back to this page here, you can see it's using materialize. Now, we also want to be able to include like public CSS files, basically our own style CSS, or maybe we want to use some front end JavaScript or images. So basically public assets. So we need to create a folder that's going to be a static folder. And by the way, you can see these down here, these logs, this is coming from Morgan. Just every time we make a request, it'll show us where to the, the status code and all that stuff, how long it took. But um, yeah, so I want to what was I saying? Static folder. So let's go to app.js and we need to define which folder we we want to use as static. So I'll go right below here and say static folder. So we want to do app.use and then express dot static. And in here we want to put the path to the static folder we want, which I'm going to call public. Now I'm going to use the path module so I can use path.join. So just bring that in. Path is just a, a core Node.js module. Okay, so we're going to bring that in and then back down here in static, we can just do path.join. And the first argument is going to be double underscore dir name, which just means the current directory. So an absolute path to the current directory. And then we want to go into public. That's going to be our static folder. So let's create that. So in the root, we want to create public. And then in here, let's create a folder called CSS. And then in there, let's create a file called style.css. And just to test things out, I'm just going to say body background black. And then in our main JS file, let's include this. Now, since it's in the, the public folder, which we made that our static folder, we don't have to put public or anything in here. We should just be able to say slash CSS slash style dot CSS. Same thing with like images or, or anything like JavaScript files or anything. So if I reload now, the background's black, which obviously I don't want to keep. I'm just going to get rid of that. I just wanted to test it out. Okay, so now we have a, our public, our custom style sheet. Now the login, as I said, I want that to use a different layout. I want that to use the login layout. Um, so the last thing I want to do for now in the main layout is just put a container class, a materialized container class around the body which will just you know push everything to the middle. And then I'm going to copy everything here and go to login. OK, this is the login layout. I'm sorry, this is not this is. I know this might be a little confusing. I mean, you could call this something different, but we want to be in layouts login HBS. I'm going to paste that in. I'll just say storybooks login and um, the main reason I'm doing this is because we want to format this page a little different. 
On the main layout, we're going to have a partial for the nav bar, uh, and we don't want that in the login. We also want want this to be like a you know a thin little box. Um, so what we'll do here is, in addition to container, let's say login container that we can we can style that on our own. And I also want this to be in a card class, and then card content. Okay, and we'll move the body up into there. And that should do it. So right now it's still not using that. If I go back here, it, you don't see the card or anything because we have to specifically say that we want that route to use this layout. And the way we do that is by going back to our index route file. And as a second argument to render, we'll pass in an object with layout and we want to use the login layout. So now if I go back to the login and I reload, now we can see the card and so on. Okay, now I do, like I said, want this to be really thin. So I'm going to just go to our style sheet, style CSS, which is being included in both layouts. And let's say login container and we'll set the width to 400 pixels, the margin to let's do 50 pixels. I'm sorry, margin top because we want to push it down and then I want to align everything to the center. So text align center. And for paragraphs, I also want to just add a, mar a 10 pixel margin on the top and bottom. And we're just going to put the important flag here to override anything um, with materialize because certain things you have to use this flag to override. Now, if I go back to login and reload, now we have the thin box. Okay, so next thing, let's let's I guess style this. We'll just style the login page. It's not much. It's really just the Google button. So we'll go now. We can close the layouts. We can actually close both the main layout and the login layout and the style sheet. And we'll go actually we'll close dashboard. So now we just want to go into login HBS, but not the layout, the view. So we want to be in this file here. So to style this, let's see how much do I have here? It's not much, so I'll just type it out. So we want an H3 and I'm going to have an icon here. So font awesome. And the icon is FA-book-reader. And then next to that icon, we'll say storybooks. And then let's have a class of section, which is a materialized class, and then a paragraph with the class of lead. And we're just going to say create, uh, create public and private stories from your life. Okay, and then we want a class of divider, which will just give us like a little border and then another section. And in this section, we want a button. So we want this to have the class of BTN. We're going to make it red and darken dash one. The link is going to go to slash auth slash Google, which is a, a route that we're going to create in a little bit. And then in here, let's put the Google icon using font awesome. So it's FAB for a class and then FA dash Google. Okay, and then we also want a class of left, which will float it to the left. And then next to that icon, we'll say login with Google. All right, so let's take a look at it. We'll reload here and there it is. There's our login page. Now, I think what we should do next is start to implement the login. Okay, so we want to work with Google OAuth. Now you are going to have to create an API key and an API secret. So the way that we do this, you want to go to your Google uh, Cloud Console. I don't know the exact URL, so we'll just search for Cloud Console. We want to go right here and you need to let's see, you need to have a project so you can see I already have one called dev one. If you don't just go ahead and click new project and create one. Um, and then we want to go to API and services and then enable APIs and services. And we want Google Plus. If you scroll down, it should be right here. Okay, so we want to click on that and then we want to you want to click enable mine's already enabled. So I'm going to click manage. 
and let's see you want to go down to credentials this is a little confusing because you have create credentials here but we don't have the OAuth option so we want to click on this link right here and then click on create credentials and you should see OAuth client ID that's what we want so we'll click on that the application type is a web app you can name it something else if you'd like I'm just going to keep that and then down here under the redirect URIs you want to add your callback URL which is going to be HTTP localhost and once you deploy you'll have to change this or, or add a new one so it's going to be 3000 and then it's going to be slash auth slash Google slash callback okay that's going to be our redirect a, a, uh, URI or callback and then we should be all set we don't shouldn't need anything here and let's just click create and then once we do that you get a client ID and a client secret so really important we want to copy this and we're going to put this in our config okay so this is going to be our Google underscore client underscore ID okay and then let's grab the secret so we're going to copy this one and let's say Google underscore client underscore secret and we're going to paste that in and don't use mine because it's not even going to work after this all right so click OK and we should be all set as far as being able to work with Google now we're going to be using passport for authentication if you've never used passport it's Uh, it's an incredible authentication package and there's just tons of what are called strategies so 500 plus strategies and just different ways to log in so you know tokens uh, local so local username and password I do have like an hour-long video on YouTube showing you how to use passport local um, Facebook Twitter auth zero github what we're using is this right here Google OAuth 20 or 20 Um, so if we go down here it kind of gives us an idea of what we need to do we need to create what's called a strategy so we want to create a Google strategy and um, pass in our client ID our secret our callback URI and then we have this function where we get we get access to the access token and the profile data so the profile data will be like your your name your Google image whatever you use as your you know your main Google image um, what else your I think it's your first name last name display name stuff like that and that'll be in the profile so in an ID of course so what we're going to do is save the user in our database okay once they verify with Google we'll save that stuff in our database and then they can use that as a login All right, and then the routes we're going to need these two routes auth Google and then we just call our Google strategy and then our callback which again we, we use our Google strategy and we set a failure so if it, if it you know the, they don't log in correctly it'll redirect them here if it's successful it'll redirect them wherever you want so that's the basic idea so we need to, to create a passport uh, config with our Google strategy So let's jump back into VS Code, make sure this is saved. And then uh, let's see. And I'm just going to restart the server since I added new global variables. And let's create So in our config, what I'm going to do is create a file called passport.js. So this is where our strategy will go. Now, in our app.js, we want to bring that we want to require that file we also want to bring in passport so up here at the top let's say const passport equals require passport and we'll go right under the config here and say passport config so we want to require dot slash config slash passport now we want to pass in because we can actually pass in as an argument the passport that we just brought in up here so that we can use it in this file 
and then another thing we need to do here is add the passport middleware so I'm gonna go down right under we'll go right under handlebars here and we want to set the passport middleware so app dot use and this is all in the passport docs so dot initialize and then we also want passport dot session now in order for passport to work with sessions we need to implement express session which we installed in the beginning I believe yeah so we have express session installed so let's go ahead and bring that in we'll say const session equals require express session and then this has its own middleware that we need oops, that we need to implement and we want to make sure that we put it above the passport middleware so we want to put it right here okay and I forget exactly what it is I'm going to go to express session So the middleware for this is right here. So app.use session, and then we can just include a couple things. So I'm going to grab that and put that right here. So secret, you can use whatever you want. Um, resave, I'm going to keep it false. This just means that we, we, um, we don't want to save a session if nothing is modified. And then save uninitialized. I'm actually going to set this to false which means don't create a session until something is stored. And we don't want this because this won't work without HTTPS. Now later on, we're going to put a store value here, which will be our Mongo store so we can store them in the database. But we're not going to do that just yet. So that should be good for now. Just make sure that this is above this. So we'll save that. Okay, we're going to get a little error here just because we haven't done anything in this config file. So let's go to our passport config. And first thing we want to do is bring in uh, we want to bring in that passport Google OAuth 2.0 module and we want to call this Google uh, strategy. So set that to require passport dash Google dash OAuth 2.0 and then we just want to tack on to that dot strategy and we're also going to bring in mongoose oh you know what we didn't create shoot we didn't create our um, user model yet because we're going to be dealing with the database here with users so we need to have a user model so i think what we'll do is just save this and let's go ahead and create that real quick I'm just going to close those up and we'll create a folder called models and inside here, we're going to have a user.js file, singular with an uppercase U. It's just the convention for models. And this is really simple. If you've ever used Mongoose, you know what I'm doing here. We're going to bring in Mongoose. Oops, what, did I, what am I doing? I'm going to bring in Mongoose, and then we're going to create a schema. So user schema, and we want to set that to new Mongoose dot schema and then we pass in an object with the fields that we want for the user now remember I told you we're going to get certain fields back when they authenticate with Google one of those is an ID so I'm going to call this Google ID which is separate from the you know the object ID that Mong MongoDB gives you by default so this is going to be type string and we'll set required to true all right and then I'm just gonna copy this down it's two three four five okay so we have Google ID the next one is gonna be display name so display name is gonna be oops we need a comma here for all of these oops get that out of there so display name is the first and last name together. So Google gives you that back. It also gives you the first and last name, which I'm also going to save. I mean, you don't really have to if you don't. I mean, you could just do the display name or just the first and last name, but I'm just going to get everything it gives us. 
and then the image so it also gives us an image this is going to be yeah that'll be a string as well I'm going to take required away from that though um, and then let's just add a created at so created at is going to be type date and we'll set a default of date dot now which will just automatically put the date and time in so that's the stuff that we'll get back from Google and then we want to export this so module exports we want to export this as a mongoose model so we need a model name which is user and then the user schema should be passed in and now since we have the model we can go back to our passport config and we can bring the user model in so dot dot slash models slash user okay we should be able to use uh, you know interact with our database and then we need to module dot exports and we're going to export function now remember we passed in passport into this file so we can catch that here okay remember in app.js right here we pass this passport in so we're bringing that in right here and then we want to create our Google, Google strategy so the way that we do that is with passport.use and in here we can say new Google strategy and this takes in an object with our client ID let's do our ID first so client ID which we can get from process.env.google client ID okay then we also want the secret client uh, client secret and then also the callback URL so the callback URL for us is going to be um, slash off slash Google slash callback now the next thing we want here is a function so we want to go right after where we have this object and put a comma and then we're going to have a function so I'm going to use we're going to use a sync await because we're dealing with mongoose so let's go ahead and just create an arrow function and this is going to take in the axis token so we're going to get this stuff available to us the refresh token uh, oops. refresh token and then the profile which is what's important to us here and then done which is the callback that we call when we're whenever we're done doing what we want to do so for now I'm just going to console log the profile now there's a couple other things we have to do um, in order for this to work we need to put the serialize user and deserialize user methods in here so if we go to passport JS to the docs just search for serialize so right here um, each subsequent request will not contain credentials but rather the unique cookie that identifies the session in order to support login sessions passport will see serialize and deserialize the user instances to and from the session so these two lines or I should say these two blocks of code here we need to put these uh, in here and we want to go outside of um, yeah we want to go outside of passport use that ends right here you just want to make sure you're still within the exports and I think yeah so it's just calling the callback passing the user ID in I'm just gonna make this an arrow function though just to stay consistent that arrow function make this just to clean it up and since this is an arrow function we don't actually need curly braces here or here and wait a minute that's not right we don't need I do we don't need this one or this one all right so just looks a little cleaner so now 
we need to before we do anything here this is i mean we're just logging the profile data we will ultimately we want to save it in the database but i just want to set up our routes so that we can actually use this strategy so to do that let's go to routes and let's create a new file called auth.js for any authentication routes and i'm just going to copy the index routes for now and let's see so we want um, this one here So this route is going to authenticate with Google. So it's going to be a get request to auth slash Google. So here we just need to do slash Google because we're going to link it to auth in the app JS. And then we can uh, we can actually get rid of this whole function right here. because what we want to put in here is passport which we'll have to bring in dot authenticate and then we need to put our scope in here because there's di there's different scopes of um well actually we need to put the strategy first which is Google and then the scope actually how does this go I have to check this out um Let's see. Let me just search for passport.authenticate. So that's for local. Actually, let's go to the specific strategy Google. So the scope is like this. So scope profile, so basically we're just asking for profile data. So we'll just copy that. and put that right in here like that and that should do it and of course we need to bring in passport okay that's that now the second route that we want here is the callback so we'll say google off callback and this is going to be get request to slash off slash Google slash uh, callback. So here we want to put Google slash callback. And then again, we can get rid of this function. We don't need that. We just want to call passport dot authenticate. I just spelled that wrong. So passport authenticate and first argument is the strategy which is Google. And then second will be an object and we can specify a failure redirect. So what do we want to happen if it fails? We want it to redirect to slash which is the login. And then we want to go after um, the passport authenticate. which ends right here and put a comma and then we have our function request response and all we're going to do is res.redirect so this this is if if it's successful we want to redirect to the dashboard okay so hopefully this is clear to authenticate we're using our google strategy which we created in our passport js file and we're just saying we want the scope of whatever is included in the profile And then this is the callback that it's going to hit. If it fails, it's going to redirect to the root. And if it passes, it'll redirect to the dashboard. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And then of course in our app JS, we need to bring that route file in. So where is it? Where did I put the routes? Right here. So I'm just going to copy that down and let's say auth and any route that is slash auth is going to be linked to that. So we shouldn't have errors down here. Let's keep going down. Okay, so it looks like we still have some kind of error here. Um requires a client ID option. I did put in a client ID. Oh, I forgot the T. Okay, so no more errors. You guys probably saw that a while ago. <laughs> So let's try it out. And what should happen is we should just console log the profile data. It should it should show us the the page to, you know, choose a Google account or whatever. But let's let's just try it out. So I'm going to go to the login and just reload. 
So this is the, the root, the home page. Log in. Now, if you have one Google account, I believe it just uses that. Um, you know, obviously, if you're logged into Google, if not, you'll have to log in. But if you have multiple accounts, as I do, you should have an option here. So I'm going to use just Jennifer Sheehan account. Now, this here is going to hang because we never called the callback within our Google strategy. However, we did console log the profile, and that's what I want you guys to see. So what we're getting here is an ID. We get a display name. We get a name with an object with family name and given name. And we get an array of photos with one object with a value. So this is your Google, the Google photo of this user and then the provider and then just some raw data down here. Same stuff. Um, so what we want to do now is take this here that we're getting from Google after a successful authentication and store it in the database. So let's do that now. I'm just going to click back on this so that that doesn't hang. And once we do that, we need to call this callback, which is done. I called it done. You can call it CB or whatever you'd like. Um, so let's continue on with this. So we brought it. We already brought in our user model, so we should be able to use that. Let's get rid of this console log profile. And I'm going to construct a new user object. So we want Google ID. Remember, these have to match up with our, our model, our schema that we created, our user schema. And we can get this from profile.id. So profile gives us everything I just showed you down here. So we want the ID. We want the display name. So profile. Now, the display name is a direct object, so we can just do that. Um, first name. We have to use name dot and then what was it given name and last name was in an object called name and that was what was that family name and then the image so the image was in profile dot photos which is an array so we want the first item and then we want the value okay so dot value. So that will give us the new user and then we can go down here and let's open up a try catch. And we want to try to store the user. So first we're going to look for the user. So let's say let user equals await because we're using mongoose here. We're going to use the user model and call the find method and our let's do find one. And we want to find where the Google ID is equal to the profile dot ID to see if that user exists. If that user exists, then we want to call our callback null, which I believe is the error. So null for the error and then pass the user in. Okay. Else. So meaning if there is no user, then we want to create one. So I'm going to set this user variable to await and then take our model and call create and pass in the new user object that I just created and then we'll call done with null and our new user. Okay, I don't know why I just said it like that and our new user <laughs> come on down. So for the catch, I'm just going to do a console error of whatever that error is. And that should do it. So we should be able to authenticate now and it should get saved in the database. So let's go back here and reload and click login with Google. I'm going to click Jennifer. So we get redirected to the dashboard, which is exactly what should happen. But let's go to our database and we should be able to check out our data by going to collections. So we have our storybooks database with users collection. And there it is. So we have a Google ID, display name, first name, last name, image created at. So we're now able to log in, log in slash register with a Google account. Now, let's see, what should we do next here? Um, I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. So let's let's make it so that we can protect routes because we shouldn't be able to go to the dash. Actually, you know what? Let's do let's do the the um, 
the nav bar. We probably should have already done that. So we can close up passport JS uh, index JS. We can close that up. Auth. You know what? Let's create our logout, which is actually really simple. So with logout, let's create a description logout user. So logout user and uh, the route. The route for this will be slash off slash logout. All right, and then we'll say router dot get slash logo. Now, with the passport middleware, once we log in, we'll have a, a logo method on the request object. So we can just simply call that request logo. And then after we log out, let's just redirect. So res dot redirect to the home page and that should log us out. Now I want to have a nav bar or it's actually going to be just like a hamburger menu that has a logout link along with the dashboard link and the public stories link. So let's go to our views and this is actually going to be a partial. So I'm going to create a new folder here called partials. And in here, I'm going to create a new file called underscore header dot HBS and the underscore is because it's a it's a partial. It's being inserted into another view. So for the header here, I'm actually just going to paste this in. You guys can just copy it. It's just a nav tag with a couple color classes, nav wrapper container. We have the logo, which is centered. And then we have a link here with the data target of mobile demo. And then this UL has an ID of mobile demo. So when you click on this, which is the bars icon, basically a hamburger menu, it will open this up. Now I'm going to save this and go to my main layout and I want to insert this. So I'm going to go right above the container and we can insert a partial like this. Okay, I believe is it two? Let me just double check that. Yeah, so that should insert the header. So I'm going to save that and then we'll go back. Now we want to go to the dashboard and reload. And there we go. Now this if I click this, it doesn't work because with materialize, if you want to use this sliding nav bar, you actually have to initialize it in the JavaScript. So we want to go to the main still in the main layout. Let's go under under here. and put in some script tags. And since we brought in materialize, we can use this M dot and then side nav. And we want to call a knit and then we need to select the class. So document query selector and it has a class of side nav. So dot side nav. So this should initialize it. And then if we go back here and reload and I click that, there we go. All right. Now, if I click logout, this goes to auth logout and remember that route logs us out and brings us back here. Now, if I go up here and I type in dashboard without logging in, I can still go to it, which I don't want. So we're going to create a piece of middleware to make sure that we can't do that. Also, if we are logged in, I don't want to see this page. I want to be booted back to the dashboard. So this is actually pretty easy. I'm just going to uh, collapse these. and create a folder called middleware. And in here we'll create auth.js. So this is auth middleware and middleware is just a function um, that has access to the request and response objects. So I'm going to module dot exports. And let's create an insure auth function. And this is going to take in request response and then next. Next is just the function you call when you're done doing whatever it is you want to do to call the next piece of middleware. And we can check here. We can say if and then on that request object, we have an is authenticated method. So we want to call is I spell that right. 
authenticated. If request is authenticated, then we want to just return next and move on because I mean they're fine. They can you know keep going because they're logged in. Else, then we want to redirect to oops, redirect to the slack to the home page to the login. Okay, so that's ensure off. Now I also want to create an ensure guest for the you know if you're logged in and you try to go to the the landing page. I don't want them to see the login. So this let's say function request response next. And again, we're going to check to see if request dot is authenticated. Okay, so if they're authenticated, then we want to redirect, uh, say res dot redirect to the dashboard. And else, so else, then we want to just return next. All right, so we'll save that. Now let's go to our index route. So routes index JS, and let's bring those in. So I'm going to use destructuring here and just pull in uh, auth. What the hell did I call it? Ensure auth. Ensure auth and ensure guest require. So we want to require that from dot slash. Wait, where are we? We want to go up one level to uh, middleware and then off. And then whenever we want to use middleware within a row, we just add it as a second argument. So we'll put in here. This is the login, which should be ensure guest because only a guest, someone that's not logged in, should be able to see this. However, the dashboard is ensure off. All right, so we'll save that. Let's try it out. So now if I try to go to dashboard, I can't. It just boots me back. But if I log in with Google, I'm at my dashboard. And if I try to go back to just the login page, I can't. So we have that middleware now. It's pretty simple. And we have protected routes. Now we do have a, uh, an issue here. So I'm logged in right now in my dashboard. And actually, you know what I'm going to do is in the dashboard route. So we can get the user with request.user. So I'm going to console log here request.user like that. And then if I go back to my dashboard and I reload, so it kicks me out because I'm not logged in. Um, Actually, I didn't even have to do the console log because we already have the the protected routes. But you saw as soon as I reloaded my server, I got kicked out like I can reload now. And it'll actually console log my user down here. Let me go down to the bottom. So you can see it logged my user. If I change anything here, like just get rid of this console log. And then I save it resets. It restarts my server using NodeMon. So now if I go back and I reload, I get kicked out. So I want to prevent that from happening. And what I'm going to do is store the session in the database. And we're going to do that with that connect Mongo extension or not extension package that we installed. So let me just close up what I don't need here. And let's go into our app JS. So in our app.js, we're going to go up to the top here and bring in, let's say, we're going to call this Mongo store. And we want to set this to require. And we're using connect Mongo. Now we just want to add on to this. We want to pass in session. So this session right here, because you need express sessions or some kind of session uh, middleware, and we need to pass that in here. So just make sure that's below it. And then all we should have to do is go down to express sessions where we have that express session middleware and add in a store 
and set this to a new Mongo store. And then this takes in an object with the mongoose connection. And to get that, we can just simply take mongoose, which I don't think we brought into this file, but we will, and then dot connection, because that'll give you your current mongoose connection. So let's make sure we bring that in. I'll just go, just put that in up here. All right, so now let's save that. And we're going to try this again. Let's reload and log in. So now I'm logged in and I'm going to reload the page and notice it didn't boot me out. And that's because if I go to my database and I reload here, you can see sessions and there's our session. So the cookie and if we just can I see this? right here. So passport. So it just shows our cookie. It shows passport. It shows the user ID for this login. All right. So that fixes that issue. So the next thing I want to do is let's what do I want to do next? So we have our dashboard. Our dashboard has nothing on it. Um, I think we're ready to just to start dealing with stories. I think our authentication is pretty much all set. Uh, one thing I would like to do is in for our dashboard route. Let's see. So rendering dashboard. Let's actually pass in the user name here. So dashboard um, and then we'll pass in name with request dot user dot and let's pass in the first name and we should be able to access that in our dashboard. Uh, in our view. So I'll go to views dashboard and let's see, let's actually change this to an H6 and then we'll have an H3 and we'll say welcome name and we'll put a paragraph and say here are your stories because we're going to want to list all of our stories here. But let's see if that name shows up. Yep, there we go. Okay. Um, before we do like the dashboard stories, I would, I'd like to just do the gen, general general. Well, no, we can do the dashboard stories first. Let's do that. Get that over with. So in our index.js, um, well, actually, before we do this, we need to create our story model because whenever we're dealing with a, a new resource in the database, we need a model for it. Right. So let's go to models and let's create story.js. And I'm going to just copy my user schema here, paste that in and let's change this to story. So for our story, we're going to have a title, which will be a string. We'll set trim, trim any white space to true uh, body status. Now status is going to be either public or private. So I'm going to set a default for this um, to be public. Okay. And then I'm also going to set an enum, which will be a list of possible values. So it can either be public or it can be uh, private. What am I doing? Public or private. And then we're going to actually have a user connected to each story. We need to know who who did what. So the user is going to be a special type of an ob, a mongoose object ID. So mongoose dot schema dot types dot object ID. And then the way we connect it to the user model is with ref. So we'll have a reference to the user model. And then the last thing I want is just to create it at so we can get rid of that image. OK, and then we can just change this to story and we want to pass in the story schema and that should do it. So let's close that up and let's go back to our index route here, because what we want to do is get all stories that are our own. Now, I know there's no stories in the database just yet, but 
we'll just add the functionality and it'll just say whatever, you know, no stories available. So in dashboard, let's first bring in our model. So I want to require Okay, I want to bring in story and then right before we do the render, let's do a try catch and let's say const stories equals and we need to make sure this is a sync. So stories and then we're going to await story dot find and what we want to find what we want to limit here is the user. We want to limit it to the logged in user which we can get with request dot user that gives us all the fields but we want to match the ID. Now you have to, in in order to pass in data to a template into a handlebars template and render it loop through it and all that we need to call dot lean and this actually will tell us what this does so documents returned from queries with the lean option enabled are plain javascript objects not mongoose documents and that's what we need in order to pass it in and use it in a template okay so now what we want to do is take this render and we want to move this up here after we fetch the stories and we want to just pass in stories. Okay, now in the catch, I'm just going to do a console error of the error. Now we need to figure out how we want to handle errors and we're not using like, you know, react or anything. So we can't just simply send a JSON um, object or anything like that. We're going to render an error template. So under views, I know we're kind of bouncing around here, but under views, I'm going to create a folder called error. And then let's create a file called 500.hbs and we'll create a file called 404.hbs and you can do other errors if you want but here I'm just going to paste this in it's just 404 not found we're sorry and then a link to the dashboard and then in the 500 we'll go ahead and paste that in just server error. Okay, so now we have those templates and now if this if something goes wrong here, we'll res dot render and let's render from the error folder we will render 500. All right, now if we go back to dashboard, we're not going to see any changes and uh, what I would like to do is loop through the stories, although I know there's no stories in there yet and then output them in a table. All right, so let's go back to our view dashboard HBS. And from here, I think first what we want to do is is actually check to see if there are any stories. So we can do that by saying if uh, stories. So if stories, then we'll have the table and all that else. And then we want to just end the if so else then we'll say you have not created any stories, which is what we should see now. Let's reload. OK, so you have not created any stories. Now to loop through the stories, which we don't have, uh, well, actually, we're going to make a table. So let's first just construct the table. So we'll say table, we're going to give it a class of striped and then let's create the heading. So the T head with the table row of table headings of we'll title. So we'll have title, we'll have the date and we'll have the status. And then this is just for like the delete edit and delete buttons. And then underneath the T head, let's create the T body. And to loop through those stories that were passed in, we can say each stories. And we'll just uh, close that up. So each stories and then we'll have table rows with that data. So let's say table row TD. So our first column is going to be the title which is going to actually be wrapped in a link that goes to slash stories slash and then 
the story ID, which would be underscore ID. Now it automatically knows that this this is the story ID because we're in where is it we're in the loop here, so we don't have to do stories dot underscore ID. It just it just knows. Um, same with the title, so we can just put in a title like that. We don't need stories dot title. And then the date. So um, the date I'm going to want to format this using a handlebars helper, but for now I'll just put it right in there. The created at. Okay, and then we want the status. So here I'm going to put it in a span with the class of dash status and status like that. And then this last one here is going to be the the edit button and the delete. Now you can't have a delete get request, so we can't just have a a link to delete. We'll have to use a form and we're going to use method override. So we're going to do that later. I'm just going to leave this blank for now. So if we save this, we're not going to see any difference because we don't have any stories created. So I think what I want to do next and feel free to I mean, this is a long, long video, so feel free to stop and come back later if you want. Um, but what we're going to do now is create our add button. We're going to have a little add story button that goes to a form so we can actually create a story. So let's create the button first, which is going to be a partial. So I'm going to go to partial new file underscore add underscore btn dot HBS. And let me just grab that real quick. So pretty simple. We just have fixed action button as our class. It's going to go to stories add as an icon and so on. So if we save that, we go to our main layout, we can insert that just like we did. Uh, or is it main layout just like we did the header. So we just actually copy that down and just say add. What is it? Add underscore BTN. So now if we go back and reload, we have a little add button here. If I click it, it goes to story slash add, which doesn't exist yet. So let's create that next. Let me just close that up. Close that up for now. Um, so under views, we're going to have a few stories views. So I'm going to create its own folder. So in views, we'll have a stories folder and let's create a file in stories called add.hbs. So this will be our ad form. And I'm just going to grab this because it's not it's not much. It's not difficult. So it's just a form. It, it's going to make a post request to slash stories and we have a title as a name and ID. We have a select field here. We actually don't need unpublished. So just public and private. Public is selected by default. We have the body, which is a text area, but I'm going to show you how we can implement something called CK editor. And then we have a save button and then just a cancel that goes to the dashboard. So let's save this and let's create the route to show this. So we need the stories route file now. So under routes, let's say new stories dot JS. I'll just copy what we have in index for now. And let's see, we'll just get rid of the second one here. And we'll keep we don't need ensure guests because the login or the home is the only thing that's going to need that. We will keep ensure off. We'll keep the, the story model. Um, and then let's see. So this first one here is going to be show add page. So it's a get request to stories slash add. So let's put that here. So just slash add here. Ensure off. And then um, we just basically just we don't really need to pass anything in. We just want to render that template. So we can get rid of that. We're going to render stories slash add. So pretty simple. Now, in order to use this file, we need to just like the others, we need to bring in the route to the app JS. So let's change this to stories. OK, so we'll link that. And now if we go back and we click on this, it brings us to the page. Now, this looks really weird. The select isn't even really showing up because with materialize, you have to initialize it with JavaScript, just like we did with the with the menu. 
So let's go back to the main layout. And right here, this init, I'm just going to copy this down and we want form select init and we're going to grab oops, query selector and we want the ID of status, which is that select form. So now if I go back and reload, nothing. Um, what did I do wrong? Oh, I get an extra parenthesis. Okay, so now we have our select list. So for the text area here, I want to make this into a WYSIWYG editor. We're going to use something called uh, CK editor, which we can get the CDN for from CDNJS. So if we search for CK editor right here, we're going to grab not this jQuery adapter thing, but this right here, CK editor JS. I'm going to grab the script tag and I'm going to put this um, in my main layout here. I'm going to put it right under the materialize. And this is actually really easy to set up or initialize. We just need to go down here and say CK editor dot replace. And in here, the name of the field we want to replace, which is body, because if we look in our ad right here, text area has a name of body. So we want to replace that with this with the CK editor. Okay, so back here, replace, and then we can have an object with a plugins value because there's a lot of things you can add. Um, if you want to look at the docs, you can, but we want the WYSIWYG area. So what you see is what you get area. Uh, we also want the toolbar and basic styles and link. We want to be able to do links. So let's save that and let's go back and close this up and close all this. Let's go back here and reload. And now we have an editor. Now, if you put something in here and you hit enter, it'll automatically put paragraph tags in. So it'll format it automatically. Now we want this to work. Remember, this is making a post request. If we go back to the add template, it's making a post request to slash stories. So we want to create that. So let's go back to our stories route. And let's see, let's just go right on. I'll just copy this. So let's say this is going to process the add form and it's going to be a post request to stories. So we want router dot post to just slash which represents stories and ensure auth and let's get rid of this. And we want to try catch for the error. I'm just going to console error error and then res dot render error slash 500. Now in here we want to process. We want to create the story. So remember request dot body. If you've worked with Express, you know this request dot body is going to give us the data that's sent in from the form. However, in order to use request dot body, we need to add a piece of middleware, which we haven't done yet. So in our app JS file, let's go right after we initialize this and we need to uh, add the body parser middleware, which is app dot use to accept form data. We want to do express dot URL encoded and we're just going to pass in this extended and set that to false. And then I'm also going to accept JSON data, although we're not doing that, but I'll just add in express dot JSON. So now we should be able to get the data from request body. Now this obviously this doesn't include the user and the user is part of the story schema. So we can get the user from request dot user. So what I'll do is add on to this a user value and set that to the request dot user. All right. Or request dot user ID. OK, so yeah, so that'll get added to that. Um, and then we need to create it. So we need to await. Let's, add, let's make sure we add a sync up here. So we want to await 
and we'll use our story model and we want to just call create and we're going to pass in request dot body. So that'll create it and then we just want to redirect to let's redirect to the dashboard. All right, so we'll save that and then let's go back. Let's reload this ad page and I'll say let's say gen story one and public and then I'll just say this is my story. I hope you like it. Actually, you know what? Let's make this a longer one. I'm just going to grab some text. Now, if I copy it right from the website, it's going to format it for me. So I'm just going to paste it in. Let's see. Let's paste it in the text editor. I'm just going off screen here and I'm just going to paste it in sublime text real quick and then copy it again just so there's no formatting to it. And then I'll paste that in here and hopefully that gets rid of any formatting. I mean, usually you're not going to paste stuff in here, but we'll go ahead and save this. So we get redirected. Wait, something went wrong. Okay, so we had some kind of error here. Let's check our console. Validation failed. Um, hmm. Status. Public status was undefined. Wait a minute. Status name. Okay, that should have got sent. Um, hmm. Public is not a valid enum value. Did I mess something up in the model? Oh, well, we can see that the that that's working. All right, let's try that again. There we go. So it's submitted and now we're seeing it on our dashboard. So we see the title, the date, which I want to format and then public. Okay, and if we go to our database. Stories. And there it is. So yeah, so it's formatted with paragraphs, which it should be. But it, yeah, it shouldn't have any styling or anything. Good. And the user is that's the user ID right there. So now we're able to add stories. Let's just add one more. We'll say um, Gen Story Two. OK. And now I just want to check to see if I log out as Jen and I log in with a different Google account. Welcome, Brad. You have not created any stories. Good. And I guess we'll create one for Brad. OK, good. So I think the next thing that I want to do is let's see you know what let's format this date and we're going to do that using moment js which we already installed and we're going to create a handlebar helper and every time i say that i think of hamburger helper but we want a helper that we can wrap around the date and format it so i'm going to show you how to do that so we we're going to create let's just close these up and we're going to create in the root a folder called helpers and then inside helpers we'll create a file called hbs.js so any hamburger helpers any uh, handlebar helpers that we're going to create will go in here now i want to bring in moment because we're going to be using this to format the date and then we'll just do module.exports and we'll just have a bunch of functions here so the first one is format date 
Okay, so this is going to be a function that takes in the date and then whatever the format that we want. And then we're just going to return from it moment. So we're using moment here. Wrap, wrap the date that's passed in. And then with mo moment, we just say dot format and then whatever the format is. So that one's pretty simple. So let's save that. Now, in order to use this in our template, we need to register it with handlebars. So we need to go to app.js and go down to I'm going to put this right above handlebars. So we first need to bring it in. So it was called what format date. Actually, we're going to use destructuring here because we're going to have a bunch of them. So format date require uh, helpers HBS and then we need to add it down here. So in this object that's passed into this exp HBS, we want to add helpers and then that's an object. Just make sure you put a comma after it and then we want to put in our format date like that and then we can go into our dashboard and this created at we can put format uh, format date and we don't need to put parentheses so just a space and that's passing created at in as this date now we also want to pass in the format so we want to put a space after um, created at and whatever the format we want so I'm going to go ahead and just put in some quotes and then paste the format that I want. So I just want the month, day, year and the time. So we want to put this in and you can look at the moment uh, moment JS documentation if you want to use some other type of format. So let's save this and let's go back. And now you can see we get June 18th, 2020 gives us the time. Good. So the next thing I want to do is the public stories. So we have this link it goes to just slash stories. So it's a get request to slash stories. And this is where we want to show all of the um, stories that are public. So let's create. Let's see, we'll go ahead and create the view. So let's go into views stories and I'm going to create a new file in here and call this index.hbs. So this is our stories and we might as well just add this uh, HTML while we're at it. So let's put an H1 here stories and we're going to have a class of row and what we're going to want to do is loop through the stories because when we create the route we're going to render this template and we're going to pass the stories in. So let's say each stories and what's cool about this with these with the each is you can actually put an else meaning if there are no stories so we don't have to put an if beforehand. So let's just end this with each and in the else we'll just put a paragraph that says no stories to display and inside each here we're going to want to style basically cards that hold the story the title and at least uh, a portion of the body. So I'm going to put a class in here of call S12 and then M4. So we're going to have three three four column divs and for each one we'll render a card and I'm going to have a class of card image. We don't have images, but what I'm going to put in here is an icon if it's if it belongs to the user that's logged in. So we're going to have to do some trickery here and we're going to use a, a, a handlebar helper for this. So I'm just going to for now let's just put a comment here and let's say to do edit icon because that's going to be a helper. Now we're going to go outside of the card image and do a card. We want card content and then I also want the center align class here. And inside here we'll have an H5 with the title. So we're in the each loop. So that's going to give us the story title. Then we'll have a paragraph and inside this paragraph we want the body. Now we're going to have we're going to have some issues with this with the body for one. It's going to be way too long for the you know for the, the one where we added the long text. So we're going to need a helper for that. Um, also, it's going to render the paragraph tags. So we want to strip those out as well. So we, we do have some work to do on this after, but I'm going to save that for a little later. So after the 
that paragraph, let's put in a line break and then we're going to use the class of chip. So in materialize a chip is kind of like a badge. It has a background color and it has some rounded corners. And this is where I want to put the user image and their name. So let's put an image tag and we're going to get the image from the user. So story dot user dot image. Because remember, we have access to the image. I'm sorry, the user fields because of that relationship that we created within the model. And we're going to populate that uh, populate the stories with the user data. And then we'll have a link. So this link is going to go to slash stories slash user slash and then we want the user ID. So we're going to say user dot underscore ID. And what that route's going to do, we haven't created it yet, but when we do, it's going to show all the stories of a specific user. And inside this link, we'll just show the display name. So user dot display name. All right. And now after the let's see, we want to go outside of the card content. So that ends here and we want a card action class. And let's also actually add the center line. So this is going to be the read more button. So let's say a class BTN and we'll make it gray. And this is going to be this is going to go to slash stories slash and then the ID of the story. So underscore ID because it's just going to go to the single story page. So here we'll just say read more. And I think that should do it. So we'll save that. Just go down here, make sure we have no errors. So we'll save that and then let's go to our stories routes. So we want to go to routes and then stories JS and we want to create the route to uh, a get request slash stories just to show them all. So let's go down here. I'll just copy this. Yeah, so we'll copy that and we'll go right here. We'll say show all stories. So there's basically two things we want to do here. We want to fetch the stories and we want to render them in the template. So the route is going to be a get request to stories. Ensure auth. We want to make this a sync since we're dealing with the, with mongoose with the database and we'll just get rid of this for now. So we want to try catch. And for the error, same thing we've been doing, we'll just console log uh, the error and we'll go ahead and res dot render error slash 500. Now in the try, we want to fetch the stories. So we want to await, take our model and call find and we're going to get all the public stories. So let's say we're status is equal to public. And then I'm going to populate. So I want to add on to that populate with the user models because I want that user data like the name and stuff like that. That's not part of the story. That's part of the user model. So we want to make sure we populate it with that and then we can sort. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort by created at. So created at let's say descending ascending and then we just need to add that lean so that we can pass it into our template. Okay, now we'll res dot render and we're going to render the template that we just created, which is stories index and we just want to pass into that stories. Okay, so we'll save that. Now we already have the, our menu that goes to slash stories right here. So let's click it and that didn't work. Router dot get. This should actually be just stories. Uh, oh, <laughs> we don't need to put stories in here. It's just slash because we save that because in our app JS where we link all of our routes, we already have slash stories. So let's try that again. Let's reload and let's go public stories. And there we go. Now, right off the bat, you can see the problem here. So this one, I mean, these are just short text, but this body has a bunch of text in it and it's just way too long. Also, it's showing us the tags. So I'm going to create two new helpers. One is going to strip the tags out and one is going to truncate the text. So let's jump back into our helpers file, which is this uh, HBS file. And I'm actually going to 
paste these in just because I don't feel like typing them out. So the truncate, just save that. So truncate function, it takes in a string and it takes in the length. So basically how, how, much, how long do we want this to be? 150 characters, 200, whatever. And then this logic here is just going to cut it to that length and it's going to add on this ellipses ellipses is that what this is called three dots it's going to add that on as well okay so we're just doing that with the substring uh, method and then we're just returning that new string now for the strip tags i'm going to create this helper so this strip tags takes in an input and then it uses dot replace and regular expressions to just replace any HTML tag. So this is just a regular expression that's going to look for anything with the, the front and back brackets, angle brackets, and replace it with nothing. So that's all that's doing. So now we should be able to use strip tags and truncate, although before we can use them, we have to register them. So we get to bring them in from the helpers file. So we have strip tags and we have truncate, bring those in and then add them here strip tags truncate and now we should be able to use them so we'll go back to where is it uh, index hbs and go down to where we have the body so the body is right here um, and what we want to do is wrap this in both of those tag both i'm sorry both of those helpers so the first one is strip tags and then the way we can use both of these is with parentheses. So if we put parentheses here, we can then inside here pass in truncate. So it's going to strip tags and then it's going to well, it's going to truncate it first. So we start within the parentheses and then it's going to strip the tags from that. So let's save and let's go back and reload. All right, so it stripped the tags, but it didn't truncate. And the reason it didn't is because we didn't input the second argument. If we look at truncate, it takes in a length and we didn't put that in. So let's add right here 150. Okay, so we'll reload that and now we get a max of 150 characters. It adds the dots on the end and that's that. All right, so that looks good. Now, I think the next thing I want to do since we're we're doing the helpers here is add the edit icon helper. So I'm logged in as who am I logged in as I'm logged in as Brad. So if I look at public stories, my one story here should have an edit icon. So let's go back to the helpers. And for the edit icon, let's see, do I want to paste this in or um, I guess yeah, I'll just paste this in. You guys can copy it. So and I'll just explain it. So this function here, it's going to take in a bunch of things. It's going to take in the story user, OK, because it needs to know what the user of this particular story is. It's looping through all the stories. We need to know the user for each one. We need to know which user is logged in and looking at the stories. We need to know the story ID and then floating is just so we can have an edit icon somewhere else, because with these cards, it's what caught the icon or the the button we want to put here is actually a floating a floating button in materialize when we view the single story we want an edit button as well but we don't want it to have those floating classes so that's why i have floating here and i just have it set to true by default and then here we're just checking the story user's id we're just converting it to a string and then we're seeing if it's equal to the logged in user's id and then if it is, we just continue to check to see if it's a floating icon or floating button, whatever you want to call it. If it is, then we just have these classes here. OK, if it's not, then we don't even have any classes on the link. It's just wraps the icon and the link is going to go to the edit page with that particular story ID. OK, hopefully that makes sense. And if it if the logged in user is not the story owner, it's just going to return nothing and it's, we're not going to see the icon. So let's save this and then let's go back to app.js and bring in edit icon and register it down here. And then we'll go back to our where is it index HBS where I have this uh, right now. I just have a comment there, so we want to get rid of that. 
and we're going to pass in edit edit icon yeah so we have edit icon and then we're passing in user now this is a little tough to understand so if i just say user it's going to pertain to the stories user okay because we're in the loop and that's what i want right i want the story user if we look at the function here that's the first param the next one is the logged in user now in handlebars if i just go up here and say user that's going to be the logged in user because i'm not within this loop now if i want to access that user from within the loop what i can do is a dot dot slash so basically i'm saying go up one level out of this loop and grab the user so that's going to be the logged in user the next parameter that i want to add in is the story id which i can get with underscore id because we're already in the stories loop there's also a floating option but i want it to be true in this case and that's what we have as the default so we don't have to um, you know explicitly set that So let's save this. It this might not work, but yeah. Okay. So, well that's not what I expected, but cannot read property ID of undefined. No, that is what I expected. So, I don't think it's we don't have access to this global user. Um we have access to request.user within our routes, but in our template, it doesn't know what user is. It knows what this one is because it's in the loop. So what we're going to do is go to our app.js and I'm going to set, set what's called a, a global variable. Not like an environment variable, but an express global variable. So we'll go Let's see. We'll go like go right under the passport here. Let's say set global variable. So in express the way that we can set this is first I mean we need to set it as middleware so app.use and then we're going to pass in a function just a middleware function which has access to the request and response object of the cycle and next which we need to call after we're done and what I'm going to do here is set a global variable by saying res.locals dot user and I want to set that to request dot user cuz with the uh passport with the authentication middleware we have access to request user we've been using it in some of our routes so this is a middleware function so we have access to it here and what I'm doing is setting a global variable so doing this should allow us to just access user from within our templates all right so we'll set that and we'll set it to null if it doesn't exist and then we just need to call next So now if I save this I'm hoping this will now work and it does this is not right but we're not getting an error uh what did I do here Let's see Oh you know what we have to actually use triple where is it index for edit icon we have to use triple um curly braces here in order to parse that. There we go. So basically if you want to parse HTML with handlebars, you need to use that triple um that triple curly brace. So this edit icon does look a little big and you'll notice in the helper here I have a class of fa small. That's not an actual like font awesome class. That's something that I'm just going to add to our public CSS here. So let's say fa dash small, and I forget what size I made this. Uh, let's give it a width, a width, a font size of 16 pixels, and we're going to add important and reload. Okay, so now it's a little smaller. So now we have an edit button on whatever story is ours. If I log out. and I log back in with Jen's account and I go back to public stories now the edit icon is on these two cuz these are these belong to me now if I click edit obviously this does nothing because we don't have that route yet so I think that the next thing we should do is create that uh that functionality so we do need to render an edit page here 
So I think what we should do first is go to our routes, stories routes, and create a route to show the edit page. Now when we show the edit page, obviously we have to pass in that particular story because we want to show the values within the edit page or within that form. Uh, so let's see, let's copy this. Okay, so we want to show the edit page and it's going to be a get request to stories slash edit slash and then the ID of that story. So here it's going to be edit and then the ID parameter um, ensure auth and then we want to let's mark this a sync. Okay, and then here we want to say const story. We want to await on story dot, and let's use find one. We're finding one story, and we're going to get it by the ID, which we want to match to um, request dot params dot ID. And then we just want to add dot lean because we're going to be passing this into our template. Now we want to check to see if the story is there. So if not story, whoops, if not story, then let's go ahead and return res dot render. And I want to return the 404 error page. So error slash 404. Okay. And then we'll keep going down here. Now we also, another thing we want to do is redirect if it's not the story owner because we don't want someone to be able to get, we don't want Jen to be able to go to Brad's edit page and edit it or even see any of that. So let's go ahead and say if um, we'll say if the story from the database, if the story dot user is not equal to the request dot user dot ID, which is the currently logged in user, if that's not true, then let's redirect and we'll just redirect this to the public stories, which is just slash stories. OK, and then actually let's put an else here. Else, then we're going to res dot render the stories slash edit. And we, of course, want to pass in the story. So let's save that now. We need to create this stories edit. So let's go into our views folder and then in stories and let's create a new file called edit dot HBS. And I'm going to copy what I have in my add HBS because it's very similar and we'll paste that in. Let's just say edit story and I just want to see if it renders. So I'm going to save this and go back and I'm going to click on one of these and we see our edit page. Now, obviously, we want to have our data, our story that we're editing, which is this one here. This this is the ID. We want that to show up in the form. So back in our edit, let's go. Let's start with the title right here. So this is pretty easy. We can just add a value and inside here we should be able to take our story and call dot title. And if we go back and reload, now we get the story title. Um, for the the select is going to be a little difficult with handlebars. If we want to have a, a pre selected select, it's we have to we're going to have to add a helper. But let's do the body. Uh, if we go down here, we should be able to just right in the text area. We should be able to just put in story dot body like that. So now if I reload, there we go. Good. So for the select, this is this is going to be a little difficult. We have to. Well, not difficult here, but in the in the helper. So we're actually going to wrap this. We can create helpers that wrap things. So we're going to wrap the options in a hash select. And we want to put we want to pass in the story status as an argument. Right. And then we want to end this after the options like that. 
so so this this is nothing right now but we can we can turn it into something by going into our HBS file and I'm actually gonna just grab this uh, real quick where is it so let me grab this and go right under the edit icon and paste this in and I'll be honest with you this is something that I just found I think on Stack Overflow because I could not figure out how to have something selected in handlebars that was you know because obviously if it's public we want public to show if it's private we want that to show and this is a I think this is a snippet that I found to be able to do that so it takes in whatever the selected option is um, and then the options themselves which we actually wrapped uh, here and what it's going to do is set selected on if it's you know if it's public it'll be on the public option if it's private it'll be on the private option and it uses regular expression to do that so let's save this and it's not going to work just yet because we have to register this just like we would any other helper so in our app js which is jesus this is a lot of files um let's see we want to go up here and let's add in select and put that in here select and that should now select the correct option so if i reload i mean it's it's public but i think all of our stories have been public so let's well we can't change it yet because this doesn't work yet but when we do add the functionality to edit this story well you know what let's create a new story so actually want to go to dashboard and create a new one so this is say gen story three and let's set this to private this is my private story okay so we'll save that so this one's private and we'll go back to public stories not public stories because it's not going to show here which is good it's, it's private so it shouldn't show here what I want to do is edit which I don't have the edit button so I'm going to have to just manually um, and these should be links those should be links um, for the dashboard okay so this didn't go around that told you this wouldn't be polished so if we click on story three, obviously we can't get that, but let's say stories slash edit slash and then the ID. OK, so now you can see private is selected by default. So that's that's all I wanted to check. Now we want to have this form actually make a put request because when we make updates on a server, updates to a database, we want to make put requests. Now we can't do that by default, right? We can't go to our edit form and say method put or method delete. We can't do that. It can be get or post. So that's where that method override uh, package comes in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to minimize the files I have open because I know this, this must be confusing. Um, so the way that we use method override, let's go to our app.js because there's, there's some middleware and stuff that we have to actually add in. So first thing, of course, we want to bring it in. I'll just bring it in right here. So let's say const method uh, override. And we want to set this to require method override. Now I'm going to go to the docs for this. because we need to see what we need to add as far as middleware. And there's a few ways to use this. Um, I think, yeah, what we want to do is this right here. The way that this is going to work is in our form, we'll have our standard method equals post, but then we should be able to add a hidden input with the request we uh, the, the method we actually want to use which is going to be put in this case. We'll also do a delete as well. So this piece of middleware right here, 
what should allow us to do that. And you can see the example in the form. There's a hidden input with an underscore method as the name, and then the value can be put or delete or whatever. So I'm going to grab this. Yeah, let's grab this. And let's put it. Uh, I'm going to put it in, up near the top. Let's paste that in. I'll just say method override. Okay, so it's just going to check the request body. It's going to look for this underscore method and it's going to replace it with whatever we um, whatever we add, whether it's put or delete. Let's just change this to let. I don't like the look of var. So look in URL encoded post bodies and delete it. So it'll actually delete it and replace it with um, with put or delete. All right, so let's save this. And let's go to edit or edit HBS. And so we, I mean, we're going to keep just method post, but as you can see in the middle where it's going to delete that or no, it's not going to delete that. It's going to replace that with whatever we put as a hidden input. So we'll go right here. Yeah, I guess we can put it right here. It doesn't really matter. So we'll put an input with the type of hidden. And let's give it a name of underscore method. And let's give it a value of what we actually want this to be, which is a put request. Now, an, an alternative to this is to have some front end JavaScript where you actually submit it you know, in, in your front end, you get the data, make a request with fetch or Axios or something like that. But this is just a, a, an alternative. So we don't have to add that front end JavaScript. Um, I probably should have said that in the beginning. Now we need to handle this put request that this form is going to make. So we need to go to our routes, our stories route. So this shows the edit page, but we need a route to actually process the edit form. So I'm going to grab this just copying this because it's the shortest. Uh, and then we'll go down here and let's say update story. So this is a it's going to be a put request to stories slash and then the ID. OK, and then let's change this to just um, this is going to be just slashed slash ID, but it's going to be uh, router dot put. It's going to be a put request. All right, uh, let's see. We're going to fetch. We're going to check to see if the story is there. So let's say let story equals await. OK, we have to add a sync here. So await and then we'll take our story model and let's use find by ID pass in the ID, which is from the URL. So request dot params oops, dot ID. And then we just want to add dot lean onto this. And then we're going to check for the story. Or I should say check if there's no story. So if no story, then let's return res dot render error slash 404. OK, and then again, we, we're also going to check to see if it's the owner. I, I could have just copied this here. Let me just grab this part. So check to see if it's the owner of the story. OK, so it should equal the story user should be the logged in users ID. Uh, if it's not, it'll redirect. If it is, then we don't want to render this. We want to update the story. So we'll set the story variable because we used let up here. So we use let story. Now we're just replacing it or, or reassigning it to await and then story dot. And I'm going to use find one and update. So I'm using this mongoose method and we want to find by the ID. So request dot params dot ID and then as a second argument after the, the object, we're going to put in the request dot body because that's the data we want to replace it with. 
And I'm also going to add some options as a third argument. One is new. And I'm going to set that to true. So it'll just create a new one if it doesn't exist. And then run validators. Uh, run validators. I'm also going to set to true, which means it'll just check up, make sure that the mongoose fields are you know, valid. And then finally, we want to redirect. So after that's done, let's res.redirect to the dashboard. Okay, so we'll save that. We'll try it out. I'm going to just reload this and I'll call this instead of gen story three, I'll call it updated story three. We'll change it to public save cannot put stories. Okay, so let's see what that just did. So it did put stories, but we got a 404 and I think I know why. Yes, because the action should not be just slash stories. The action should be story slash ID. Okay, so we need to actually put the story ID in here. So slash and this will be story dot underscore ID. Okay, we'll try it again. We just submitted it to, to the wrong place. Updated story, public, save. Okay, so updated story three and it's set to public. So it did in fact update. Okay, so we can create, we can get all the stories, we can get all the user stories for the dashboard and we can update. Uh, I think now what I wanna do, so we still have to do the delete and we still have to do the single story we have to be able to view that. Um, let's let's go ahead and do the delete since we're already dealing with the method override because we're going to have to do that as well for delete. So in the dashboard, I want to have an edit icon that simply goes to the edit page, which we already have, and then a delete icon, which is actually going to be a button. It's actually going to be a form with a button that uses method override to delete. So let's do that. Let's go to let's close this up and go to our dashboard. And we have this this empty column right here, and this is where we want to put those buttons. So let's do the, we're going to have the edit and the delete. The edit will just be a link because again, it's just going to go to a page. So let's give it a class of BTN BTN float. And let's see, we want this to go to slash stories slash edit slash underscore ID. Because remember, we're looping through the stories, so we're just getting that particular stories ID. And then let's put inside the A tag here an icon. So FAS, FA dash edit, and that's it. So if we save that, we take a look. Now we have an edit icon. If I click it, it brings us to the edit page. If I cancel, it brings us back to the dashboard. All right, good. Um, so for the delete, we're gonna go right underneath the link and we're gonna use a form. Now the action is gonna be slash same as the edit, it's going to be stories and then the ID. So underscore ID. And we're going to put in method equals post, although it's not really going to be a post because we're using the override. And then I'm just going to give this an ID of delete form. And I think that should do it. So inside the form here, we're going to have the same type of, of hidden input that we did with the put. So we want to give this a name of method underscore method and a value of the actual method we want, which is delete. And then of course we need a button. So let's say button BTN red and uh, we want to make sure that this is a submit button. So we'll give it a type. OK, so we're just submitting a form and then inside here, let's put a trash icon. So we'll do uh, FAS, FA dash trash and let's see if that shows up. 
Okay, now it shows up. However, I want these to be side by side. Uh, so yeah, and, and oh yeah, the button float. So I gave this a button float class. That's not an actual like materialized class or anything. I'm going to add just a little bit of custom style for that. So let's say btn float. And we'll just do this the easy way. Float left and we'll set a margin right of 10 pixels. And if we reload, there we go. So that looks good. So if I click delete here, obviously we don't have a route for this, but you can see it is in fact making a delete request to story slash ID. So let's now handle that. So we'll go back to our routes, stories JS. And from here we want to create a delete route. So I'm going to grab this. So this will delete story, delete story slash ID, delete ID. Okay, so the way that we want to handle this is pretty simple. We're just going to uh, try catch. So we want to await story. Oh, I didn't do a try catch with this, did I? We'll have to add that after for the put. Um, so we want to make sure this is a sync and we want to await, not wait, await story. And then I'm going to use the remove method. So I'm going to remove the story that has the ID that matches the request params.id and then I'm going to redirect. Okay, once it's removed, we'll redirect to the dashboard. And if something goes wrong here, we'll just console error error and let's return res.render error 500. And I'm just going to copy this because I want to wrap this here in a try catch as well. Actually, I'll just grab all that. Paste that in and then put that in there. All right. Did I not do it here either? Oh, this is just the show edit page. We should still we should still wrap that. Grab this. Sorry guys, I know this is a lot of code and it could be a little confusing. We don't need this log. I don't know why that's there. And I know it can be a little confusing, but you have the repository. So if you need to see the code and um, you don't want to keep pausing the video, you can just check it out there. So we should be able to submit our delete to this route here and it should remove that story. So let's try that out. Okay, so I'll just I'm going to delete this one here, updated story three. Okay, so it goes away. Good. Reloads not there. Cool. So we're now able to delete. And if you want to create an alert partial or something to show um, when you delete or add or whatever, you can do that. But this video is way, way too long, so I'm not going to do any extra so we can delete. Now, I think. I think the last thing we need to do is just the, the full story, right? If we click read more, we want to be able to see the full story. And I think then we're done. So let's add that. So for the route, uh, let's see, the route is going to be uh, it's going to be a get request to the story slash ID. So I actually want to put this up here. Let's put it. 
right under the get all stories. So I'll copy this and let's go under or show all stories. We'll go under that. And let's say show single story. It's going to be a get request to stories with the ID. So get ID. Okay, now we need to fetch the story from the database. So let's say let story equals uh, let's make this a sync. So story let's use find by ID and request dot params dot ID and I'm also going to populate with the user data so I'm going to use populate user and also lean so I'll get the story and then let's check see if the story isn't there Okay, if the story is not there, then we're going to return res dot render error slash 404. And then we can render the template, which we haven't created yet, but we will in a second. So let's say render and it's going to be in stories and it's going to be called show. And then we just need to pass in an object with the story that we fetch from the database so we can display the data. And down here, we'll just do a console error. And then let's do a uh, res render. I'm actually going to render the 404 because chances are if this is an error, it's just because it can't find it. So let's save that and then let's create the template or the view. So in views stories, I'm going to add a new file called show HBS. So in this show, I guess, you know, what? I'm just going to paste this in. And if you guys want to copy and paste from the repository, feel free. I know you guys are probably tired, especially if you've gone through this whole thing in one sitting. Um, congratulations if you have. So we have just some materialized classes. We have an H3 with the title and then we're also using the edit icon helper here, passing in the story user, the user itself. Um, we don't have to do, you know, the dot dot slash because we're not inside of an each loop. This is just the global user, which is the logged in user, the story ID and then false for the floating because this is not a floating icon. So here we just have uh, card content. We're formatting the date. That's actually not the formatting I want, though. I want what we did in the dashboard. So I'm going to grab this and put that here. Okay, then we have the story body. Notice it's wrapped in three because we want to parse the HTML. Um, and we don't want to truncate it or anything. This is the full story. Down here we have a card. Basically, this is going to be on the side. It's going to have the user's display name, the user's image. Uh, and then just uh, we have, oh, yeah, we have to do that, too, because we want to be able to link to a page that has all of that user stories. And it'll just say more from and then the store, the user's first name. Now I'm going to save this. This image small is not an actual class. Um, the reason I'm using this is because the image is way too big by default. So I just want to make it a little smaller. So we're going to go to our custom CSS and say image dash small set a width of 180 pixels. OK, that should be all we need for any custom CSS. So we'll close that. Let's make sure this is saved and our route should render this template. So let's check it out. So I'm going to click read more and there we go. Let's look at the long one, which is this one. OK, so we get story one see the icon. It's it's not floating. It's just a just the icon just sitting there. Um, and then we have the date, the paragraphs, the username, the Google, whatever they have for their Google image. 
and then this more link which doesn't work just yet. So that should be the last thing we have to do. But yeah, so we can see all the stories. We should probably put a back button or something, but it's I guess it's fine. And you guys can add on to this if you want and feel free to even make pull requests. Uh, but yeah, the last thing I want to do is I want to be able to click on this. Did I make this a link? Yeah, so the this will also go to the user stories. So we have to create this route and deal with that. So let's handle it now. So let's see routes, stories. And so we want the user story. So I'm gonna what should I use for this? Show single story. Uh, I'll just copy the first one. This is a lot of code for one YouTube video. So here this is going to be the user stories. It's going to be a get request to story slash user slash and then it's going to be the user ID. Okay. So here we're going to say get. It's already has a story, so we want slash user and then user uh, user I can't even spell I'm getting so tired. So user ID and we'll get rid of that. Okay, so inside the try here, let's fetch our stories. I keep forgetting a sync. So we want to await story dot find and we want to get only where the user is equal to the request dot params dot user ID. Okay, and we also only want the status of public because we don't want any of the private stories to show up here. And then let's add populate user and lean. Okay, and then what we want to do is render the We're just going to render the, the stories index. So it's the same template that the public stories use, although it'll only show the stories that belong to the, that user that's in the URL. So let's say res dot render stories slash index and we're passing in stories, which again is the, the user stories. And then here we'll just console error and res render all right so let's reload this so if i click one of these one of these names it'll show me just the stories from that user okay if i click just jen it'll show her and if i go to the read more and i click right here it'll show only her um I don't know why I think that translate things popping up because of this. Uh, but yeah, so we can see only a specific users set of stories. Okay, so I think that's that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a lot from it. I mean, we did a lot of different things that you can incorporate into other applications. So hopefully that helps you out. And if you want to add on to this, if you want to change it into an API so that you can use React or Vue or Angular on the front end. You can do that as well. Um, I encourage that. I always encourage to take what you learn in a tutorial and either build something else from it or make it better, add on to it and so on. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I am really tired. <laughs> I did this all straight through. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little beat. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.